Hey guys, well we're uh, we're back in the garage and we've got more to do on the uh, Triumph T140. So um, I have done a couple of things since the last video, which I didn't film because I didn't really think anybody would want to watch it. But I did put turn signals on the bike. There's now turn signals front and back on it. I changed out the flasher, and for those that don't know, because I had to hunt for it, it's right in there. Believe it or not, yeah, it's not you know where you'd expect it in the wiring harness in here under the tank it is in there and sure enough on this bike it needed a new flasher so anyways that's what I've done so far but today we have something else to do we are going to work on uh, replacing uh, a leak or replacing an o-ring on this is causing a leak on the uh, on the rocker head here so on the rocker panel there is a problem which I'm going to take the, the take the camera off and show you in a minute uh, and we're gonna fix that up so that we don't have a leak anymore. So uh, let me show that to you. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the problem that's on this bike here. And well, the bike's got a few problems, but the problem we're gonna tackle right now. So uh, first off, without me saying anything, do you, uh, do you see a problem there anywhere? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, yeah, it looks like, I don't know, is this JB Weld, is it, uh, is it PL construction adhesive? God only knows what it is. But uh, this should look like this, okay? There should not be that all over that uh, rocker panel. Is it a rocker panel, a tappet cover? Uh, somebody down the, in the uh, below can correct my, uh, my phraseology here, my apologies, but uh, Right there, we wanna fix that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, there's a shaft that goes through here, okay? There's a shaft that goes through here and that's what your um, your rockers are pivoting on, okay? To actuate the, uh, that are actuated by the push rods that actually actuate the valves. So um, what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, try to remove some of whatever the hell this is we're going to uh, loosen the bolt, or the, excuse me, the nut that's on the other side of the of the uh, of the bolt here, of the rocker um, shaft, uh, and we're going to pound this out a little ways so we can expose the O-ring that is sitting there, uh, and then replace the O-ring and then get it back in here, and that'll be a bit fun because we're going to have to make a little bit of a tool to get that back in. So, anyways, that's what we're up to here today. So, uh, you know what? Um, hey, let's get after it. Okay guys, uh, so obviously this is our issue here. Well, part of our issue. Somebody's tried to, obviously there was a leak here, right? Um, and it's not uncommon for these things to leak. Here's the other one over here, right? Uh, there's an O-ring in there and if that O-ring gets, you know, brittle, which it often does over time, or wear, because, you know, um, then, then it will leak here. And I think rather than fixing the problem, somebody's put something here to try to get rid of the leak. So I think before we do too much, we're gonna try to get this crap off of here if we can. Oh, well, that's a lot easier than I thought it would be. Okay, well, that's interesting. I wonder why it's all <laughs> orange behind there. I wonder what the hell that's all about. Maybe that's some, oh, you know what? I think that's actually silicone. Oh God. So I guess before they put the JB Weld on it, they put silicone on it. That's interesting. Well, that's a bit of a nightmare. Let's see if we can get this out of here. I'm just using a pick to try to pull this crap out. Jeez, that's nasty. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'll probably fast forward through some of this so you don't have to see me working away at this, but what I'd like to do before I actually push the rod out, I'd kind of like to get this cleaned up a little bit, you know, um, just because I don't want to have to, you know, I, I want it as clean as I can get it before I push the shaft out because, um, I mean, it's pretty unlikely we'd push anything into the engine, but it's just probably easier to clean it now. Or not, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's not. We'll see. Well, regardless, we'll try to get at what we can now and then we'll deal with the rest when we have the shaft partially out. Because again, we're not taking the shaft all the way out. We're going to take that shaft just out far enough so that we can get the O-ring on.
a little surprised somebody would actually do this on a nice bike like this but you know what um hey we're all learning right and actually i'm at the top of that list i don't know what the heck i'm doing <laughs> so sometimes i'm sure i do some things that are questionable as well in fact it's not uh maybe i do that i'm sure i do all the time so i'm not going to judge anybody but that said um yeah this clearly was not the right way to solve a leak um good try though valiant effort uh but yeah not uh not the right way okay well is that perfect not really um but you know what i think we've actually got the vast majority of it off of there you know the, the one of the great things the fact that they put the silicon over an oily area <laughs> also uh quite frankly helped the removal because that silicone did not stick very well good thing um okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'll move the phone over to the other side so i can sh show you uh the nut that i'm going to take off so that we can just move this out a little bit so let's do that next okay guys we're on the opposite side of the bike now i'm now on the right hand side of the bike and we're looking at uh this nut right here that is the nut that is uh, uh on the other side of the shaft that we're going to push out that way just a little bit so we're going to take that nut off uh and that is five eighths for those of you following at home i'm just going to move that out of the way so i don't Let's hope I don't break a spark plug here. I'm gonna try to not hit the tank either. Okay. Let's take that nut off of there. Okay. Oh, I see that that actually looks hollow. Eh? That's interesting. I'm gonna have a little better look at that. Okay, guys. Uh, I've taken a little bit of a look at this, and you'll notice we've got the we've got the nut off. There's also a copper sealing washer here, so we're going to carefully take that off and set it aside. Okay. Um, and uh, now what we want to do is we want to knock this back very carefully. So I'm going to first try a little a rubber hammer here, just so we can pound it back some. Yeah, that doesn't seem too likely. So I've got a. I found a punch here that's uh, a brass punch that is the inside diameter of that of that hole. And we're just going to carefully move it back. And now you can see she's going. I don't want to go too far. And now we're going to look at the other side and just see if she's out far. Okay, guys, I had to look on the other side and she needs just a little bit more encouragement. We're almost there. So... I think that should be perfect right there. So you know what? Let's go over to the other side and have a, have a look and see what we got. Okay, guys, I've got you zoomed in so you can see what we've done, okay? We've, uh, we've popped this out just far enough to expose that offending O-ring. Do you see that? So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab uh, a pick or something else and see if we can get that O-ring off of there. Okay, guys, I've got a uh, I've got a pick here. I've got a few different ones, but I got this one with a bit of a funky twist on the end to see if I can get this out of here. I'm right-handed, so my hand's going to be in your way. I'm sorry about that, but it is what it is. Let's see what we can do to get this out. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll try the other side since you can't see that way, anyways. Hmm. Wow, that is not going to be easy to get out of there. I need a pick that's got a finer point, I think, if I have one. Okay, well, let's see what Okay, guys, I've got a needle on the end of these small bit of vice grips here, so... We're on to a variety of solutions to try to get this crazy O-ring off. We'll see if I can get underneath it. Oh, hang on. Oh, you know what? I think it just broke. I think it just broke. Hang on if I can get it out of there. Well, 
Look at that. Oh, no wonder it was leaking. I mean, that is probably original 1977. I wish you guys could feel this. It is literally almost, oh, look at that. It just broke in my hand just with a tiny little bit of flex. Look at that. Just, just nothing. So, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is, uh, that's our problem. So now I'm going to go grab the replacement O-ring and we're going to stick it on there. Maybe we'll try to clean this up a little bit more with some brake clean before we do that, eh? Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, guys, I've uh, got the O-rings. I wound up uh, purchasing four of them, which is probably three more than I need, but they were really cheap. Um, and for those of you that might be interested, they are part number 603548. <laughs> okay, um, so let's uh, grab one out of here, the little bag here. And then what we're going to do is put a little bit of oil on here with our trusty oil can. Our trusty oil can. Oh, there we go. Boy, that's, that's a lot of oil. Probably a bit more than I needed, but that's okay. All right. We just want to make it easy to get this on there. Let's hopefully we don't send it across the room. Yeah. Gosh, just like that, guys. Just like that, she's on there. Okay, so now the, what we have to do, the next bit is the fun bit because apparently, um, again, I'm just a tinkering guy. I don't really know what I'm doing, but apparently you can't just push this back now because if you do, it will abrade or cut or in some way harm this O-ring. So what you have to do, some guys use, uh, there's, a, there's a tool you can buy for it or you, think, you know, grab for it when I'm not doing that because how often am I going to do this? Uh, some guys will use a 3000s feeler gauge and wrap it around there, an old one I'm guessing. Um, I'm going to do something different. I don't know if anybody's ever done what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do something different. And you know what? That probably means it isn't going to work, <laughs> but I'm going to give it a go. So uh, that'll be the next thing. We have to make up a little tool for this. So let's do that next. Okay, guys, um, as I mentioned, we need to make up a tool uh, to actually uh, put that O-ring in when we put the shaft back in. So it, it needs to hold the, uh, the O-ring in place and keep it from abrading. So what I've got here is I have uh, uh, some uh, three thousandths of an inch uh, brass stock, okay? Um, so this is typically used for shimming things. Last time I used this was on my uh, 1927 Chev uh, to shim the uh, axle rims. So that's been a long time since I've used this, but uh, I saw this and I thought, you know what? Let's see if we can make something. So what we're going to do is this is a bit of a crafting exercise. We're going to uh, cut off a piece of this. I don't think I need to take this right off that roll. We'll see. Um, we're just going to cut a piece that we know will go around that shaft. That's about, I would say, an inch and a quarter. I'm just guessing, looking at this, maybe it's an inch and a half wide. That's probably plenty. Might be too much. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our shaft, okay? Uh, if this is our shaft, here's a socket, right? If this is our shaft, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this, and let's say that's our O-ring. We're gonna wrap this around there like this, right? And then we're gonna take an elastic band. This is, this is the exciting bit. This is, uh, yeah, elastic band. We're just gonna get it nice and tight on there. Sort of like that. Well, you get the idea. I'm not, I, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're then going to push our shaft in while this piece of brass shim is on there. That's the theory. <laughs> What's the bedding? Do you think this is gonna work? Probably not, but uh, this is my crazy idea. So let's give that a go. Let's see if the brass shim stock works. One thing for sure, we're not gonna hurt anything. That's the beauty of this experiment. Definitely nothing. No one gets hurt in this experiment, I hope. So let's go give it a go. Okay guys, just off camera there, I just tried wrapping this around here a little bit. And it's gonna work, but it's gonna be really hard to get that elastic band on there that I was mentioning or any sort of tension on there. So you know what I'm gonna do? Is I went and I found a socket that just happens to be just basically the seam diameter slightly bigger and that's what I want slightly bigger okay in the diameter and I'm gonna wrap it around 
here first. Now, this, in case you're curious, it's a half inch socket, but it's a quarter inch drive. So that'll make a difference for, what we're interested in is trying to mirror the diameter of this, okay? So you look in your toolbox and you'll find something that's similar to that. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the, wrap the, uh, the shin stock around this. Then I'm going to put my elastic band on it. Now again, this may not work. This is, you're seeing this in real time, so I'm putting that on there. And I wanna move my elastic band down to the end of this because we want, it, we want it down here is where we want the tension, right? So get that down to the end of this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, hold it up carefully against here, and I'm gonna try pushing that shim stock, pushing the whole thing onto there. That's what we're gonna to try to do, just like this. Come on, get on there. Okay, there we go. And that's got it held on there nice and super tight. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another brass punch and try punching this back into place. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a brass punch here. I guess I should have had that ready, eh? But I didn't, so grab the brass punch. I gotta grab my hammer. I didn't have that ready either, so let's grab the hammer. All right, and uh, coming back. I'm almost back. I'm almost there. All right. Okay, so you're not gonna be able. Maybe I can move the camera so you can see me drifting this in. Hang on. Hang on. Well, this is all in real time. Let's see if we can move this around so you can see it on the yes heat there. Okay, great. Hopefully I don't have my big hands in the way. Well, well, I don't have big hands, but we'll see. Again, I'm using a brass punch, so hopefully I don't hurt anything. There she goes back in. There, you hear the difference in sound? She's in there. She's in there. We can take this, oh, pretty much in there anyways. At least the, uh, the O-ring part's in there anyways, so that's good. There, now she's home. Now she's home and we have a new, our new, uh, our new O-ring in there. So now I guess the test, the proof will be in the pudding. Does it leak? Okay, good. So now I'm just, I don't, I'm not gonna bother showing you the other side. All I'm gonna do is put that copper washer, that copper washer on the other side, right? And I'm gonna put the nut on and tighten it up. So you probably don't need to see that. Uh, that's pretty obvious. So anyways, guys, I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please do uh, like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. In fact, I could really use the subscribers. So please do subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything to do that. Just hit the subscribe button and and I would be very appreciative. Also, please leave a comment. You know, I, as mentioned, uh, I'm just a tinkering guy. I don't really know what I'm doing. Sometimes I try my own ideas that don't always work. <laughs> so uh, please do leave a comment. Uh, I, I read every comment and I commit to replying to every one of you. So anyone that leaves a comment, I will reply back. Thank you very much everyone and uh, have a good one. Bye for now.